My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Vault of the Void where there has been a massive update that we are going to get into in just a second. Specifically the update added Impossible Plus with scaling difficulty modifiers therein related to your instability level. We'll dive into that in just a second. But I've been thinking that... Uh, I've been using the trophy hunting and the Mistress of Trickery a hell of a lot as card backs and I'm kind of just looking for one that's... I don't know, just a little bit more me. You know? Um. Oh, oh, I got an idea. Welcome to the Republic. That one's more me. I'm just gonna go over and click that, hit that, select, and then we can get into the run. Abandoned the current run? Yeah, I had an off-camera run that I was just playing in uh, a little bit. See me if I could sharpen up my blades, get ready, you know, sharpen my uh, pencils or some such. Impossible Plus. Details. Adds various modifiers to your run equal to your maximum instability. Defeating the Void will set your maximum instability to two higher than your current run. Your maximum in instability will also increase by one for every 2,000 points you score over 17,000 on a successful run. Oh, okay. Let's have a look at this then. Okay, Original Sin adds Void cards into the base deck. There's also Do Not Start with a Random Void Stone on uh, Forget I Knew Something, or Knew I Forgot Something, rather. So this is very much akin to kind of like a, a heat setting, if you're familiar from that uh, with that, rather, from Hades. Traveling to an empty hex will inflict five damage. I mean, I feel like I could probably do that one. Take it or leave it, you do not gain any resources from declining elites or destroying cursed items. Let's turn that on. I, I think I can probably manage that one as well. I at least want to try and get to my max instability here if I have the possibility. Praying for greed at shrines gives no souls. That's a little bit rough. Take one extra damage. Uh, sorry. Take a ramping one extra threat per turn, starting from battle round five, four, and then three. Ooh, Okay. That's a bit rough. Start the run with 15 to 30% less max HP as well. Yikes. At the end of a floor, you'll heal only 75%, 50%, or 25% of the remaining HP in the Festering Scars. Uh, let's actually just go back to looking uh, in order. Tight pockets. Essence costs are increased by 20, then 40, then 60. 60%. Yikes. Uh, lingering injuries. Start the run with 15 to 30% of health loss. I'm going to start with 30% of health loss. Booster packs now contain five commons instead. Yikes. The damned, you'll only ever gain one soul from a standard mob fight. Also, yikes. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go Frail Constitution here as well as Lingering Injuries. So, Lingering Injuries is on max level. So, we have 30% HP loss at the start of the run. And we're also going to just have uh, that, or rather 15% of our health just missing straight up. And we don't get resources from declining elite artifacts or destroying cursed items. I mean, I could also go for the second level of that, right? Hang on, we take that down and then we... Go to the second... No. No, let's just go back to the, the previous one that I'd already worked out. That'll be comfy. It's, it's there. Uh, copy. No, I'm not even going to copy or reset it. Let's just jump into the run. And it's time to go for the hidden as well. And it's also time to go for a hidden blade deck, which is why I feel a little bit more comfortable taking on Impossible Plus here. Uh, maybe I wouldn't necessarily feel super comfortable with it if I was playing Daughter of the Void Soul Tithe, especially at the moment. It feels like I may end up staying on Impossible for a little bit of time before moving up to Impossible Plus. Because it feels like there's more about the base of the characters that I need to start to understand. Let's get that hidden blade in here, though. Uh, first card played each turn costs two less. Each time your deck is reshuffled, heal 10%. Delay block six and void spawns with one less fury. Hey. So that's not a super early soul collector. It's a very early disheveled salesman, though. I'm extremely unlikely to be able to find enough resources to capitalize on that. Wow. This map is actually kind of cruel. 
I'm going to take that five souls because I think I'm going to need it. You can also see... Ah, uh, yes, we can see the instability attached to a candle. There's one of our artifacts up on the top left there. Neat. All right. Going to the deck manager, let's pop the hidden blade into the deck, taking a slash out. If it didn't have the inert keyword, it would already get the yellow void stone. However, it does have the inert keyword and therefore it won't. Let's get the oversized backpack in there as well as cut another slash for the sake of putting a second chance in, just to get the base deck being a little bit more powerful. I, I could probably put the, the scattered shot in here too. Yeah, let's chuck that in. Okay. Let's have a look at the map rewards as well. Mithril Blades obviously makes a lot of sense here. So does the Apprentice of Blade and Main Gauche. Uh, Juggle got increased in cost. And now it's one for one Volatile Hidden Blade as well as a cycle of three and three. It is a common, right? So it couldn't be as powerful as Reload in an uncommon. Uh, so I, I, I understand it. It's just also I don't know how much I'm going to want to use it right now. Maybe if I have a little bit of excess energy. It does increase our deck cycle very, very effectively. And we're going to have very important cards we want to get back to consistently, right? The main gauche, the Apprentice's Blade. The Apprentice's Blade does give us temporary, not volatile, but temporary hit blades. So our draw power is going to be pretty important later on because it can draw us into the hidden blades that have gone into the discard pile. Also got the sleight of hand here. Whenever you discard or expel a card, deal five damage to a random enemy. Any of the volatile hidden blades will trigger that, right? Yeah, volatile says destroyed when played. Yes, so that'll trigger that. I'll also tag all alone and sneak attack. Uh, this is frustrating. What are you? You're the mithril blades. Could I untag you? I could probably untag you. All alone, definitely need that. Apprentice's Blade, definitely need that. Main Gauche, I don't definitely need, but I almost certainly want it. Let's have a look at the map rewards and look at the upgrade for Main Gauche. Yeah, that's a plus four block on its upgrade. Typically things upgrade for plus three or plus two to those stats. Five on the unload. I mean, for a one mana, especially. Look, Surefoot goes from five to five with rebound. The base cards in the deck go from 5 to 8. So it is a little bit better. A fair bit more efficient at that point. Oversized backpack as well. I mean, look, we may end up investing in that. But we might find better sources of draw somewhere. Natural 20 would be really good to put on the path as well. I'm starting to get... Sleight of hand. Juggle. God, it is juggle versus main gauche as well. That could be useful. So I'm starting to feel like I'm probably not going to get anything valuable in this Disheveled Salesman. So maybe my path should be something like up, around, looping around the bottom there, and then cutting across getting this treasure. We miss out on this treasure, but then that gives us the ability to go... See, it, it, it does feel like at this point that Soul Collector is not even getting touched, which... That's rough. That's really hard to deal with. What if now I go down this way and then up across, right? So I leave myself without the Soul Collector or the Disheveled Salesman. I'm not going to find another Disheveled Salesman next floor. The Disheveled Salesman is too early for me to get value out of. Let's just ignore that, right? I keep thinking about that as something that I'm trying to utilize. I should not be trying to utilize that. I'm probably not going to be able to get any value out of it here. Um... So this path gets us good cards. This path gets us both of the elite fights. This card gets us uh, one, uh, one, one treasure chest. Gets us four upgrades, four out of the five available upgrades this floor. And then later on, we have a class trainer, which we may end up actually trying to use. We miss out on main gauche and sneak attack and mithril blades in order to take this path. We also miss out on enough. Yikes, y'all, yikes. We're actually missing out on like an incredible amount of things that are really important to us. Natural 20 is pretty good though. So I still do want to keep that. Uh, yikes, 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 yikes is all I can say right now, unfortunately. Just yikes through and through.
By the way, having uh, glossed over it at the very start of the episode, I would like to say thank you so much to, to Josh Bruce, the, uh, the dev for this game, for the incredibly kind offer to add a card back into the game related to the channel. Anyone can unlock it with that code. Welcome to the Republic. It'll be linked at the top of the description down below. Uh, no spaces in there whatsoever. Feel free to type in that code and get this for yourself. I, I am over the moon with the design of it as well. Like, I... It, it's it's probably no secret, but uh, especially less of a secret to those of you who've seen my streams, uh, especially, that I have a, a very deep affinity, a very deep and complicated kind of affinity for faux kind of status symbols. So like a wax seal on kind of like gothic architecture with royal purple kind of uh, draped drapery. I guess I, I shouldn't have used the word draped if I was going to set up drapery, but I didn't know where I was going to go with the rest of it. Draped tapestry, let's say that, right, is very, very much my jam. I've, uh, I've been absolutely giddy since, since hearing that was a possibility. Extremely, extremely happy that I now get to show it off. Hey, and then we even found out lethal in turn one. Get him. All right. Secret room. That's not going to find it. Uh, there could be a secret room adjacency here. And if there is a secret room adjacency here, I actually have the ability to utilize it. So we kind of excited to see that. Deck manager is still holding this yellow void stone. Juggle should probably go in the deck at this point, actually. I think it's good enough. All right, poppers. Pat, 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 All right, cool. Now we've done that. We can see what we want to do with the rest of this fight. Let's get that oversized backpack out there. Getting a little bit of energy back there, having used it. 16. We're one down on the possibility of this kill. I'll purge two, leaving myself with the ability to defend next turn. 10. Okay. Perfect. Uh... Battle progress is complete. Second chance is an instantaneous kill for us, which literally just means we need good combo setup. Okay, cool. So I'd leave the quickness in hand. It's related to that. Okay. This one's juggle looking for defense. Two, three, one purge to get played. This one is inert and volatile, so I actually do have to play it. Ideally, I don't end up using Ghostblade for the kill. Okay, yeah, that'll help. Do that, plus second chance for the kill over there. And then... Quickness Slash. Sorted. Wonder if that Slate of Hand is actually worth putting in the deck at this point. Yeah, but you dispel or ex discard or expel. Actually, hang on. Hang on. Juggle got mad synergy with sleight of hand. And of course it does. Both of those are complicated things you do with your hands. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes. Yay. Okay, cool. Like it, love it, and I want more of it. You better bet. Let's go into this one. So while we instantaneously want to take one out, we actually really, ideally want to go for two at the same time. One, slash that, okay, two. And this is 20. 20, and then I do that for the five. I need two of them down at the same period of time. And that's not to hit the battle progress bar, it's because I only want one target left on the board that's starting to get a bunch of multi-strike. Uh, so we go slash over here. here. Hmm. Gotta set it up somehow. Do that there. Oversized. Wow, really? That is hella unfortunate, right there. 
I think I'm going to have to just double purge. I need to reduce the incoming damage next turn because, well, there's a lot of it. That underhanded tactics could be used as a weaken. I don't think it get used as anything here. There's plus one frenzy at the start of each turn. Guess I'll just play those two. Purge one more. And... I mean, I was really hoping I'd already have the kill here. Let's use Oversized Backpack first. Quickness into Blade. And then I think that plus Slash for the kill. Another upgrade here. I do like the idea of actually upgrading Second Chance right now. I think it's powerful enough this early that that would be a, a reasonable upgrade. But I also think like pretty much all of the rest of these are things we will carry for the rest of the fight. So they're probably worth an upgrade as well. Sleight of hand is interesting in that I think I upgrade that when I get either a green or a black void stone and not before. I think one big thing that we're missing right now is access to large individual amounts of block. Uh, and it's not like that's really being provided by anything else here either. I wonder if that pushes me to actually upgrade a block right now. Or if my damage plan is... Or, sorry, rather, or if my plan is damage the enemy so much that I'm fine. Oversized backpack is a little anti-synergistic with the juggle right now. Something we should be aware of. I'm currently desperately reliant on those quicknesses for my combos, so I think they need to be upgraded, actually. Sure foot. Beast constantly regenerates and inflicts dazes before attacking. I don't have another spell to utilize here, so we will go in with this one, but I'm a little <laughs> about it all, you know. Okay. Slash sleight of hand. Purge, purge, oversized. No, we purge the oversized. We'll go for full week this turn. So slash sleight of hand. Okay, Ghost Blade, Purge Oversized. I'll leave Quickness in hand. Okay, we need 10 block next turn. That's literally just defend, defend. Yeah, we weren't guaranteed to get that. As soon as I said it, I was like, mm, how likely is that actually though? Get that and then that Hidden Blade is not bad though. I mean, we got real close to the turn two kill there. These dazers also destroy on their scrap, so if we hadn't already killed there, it would have an impact. Hidden Blade is so much extra damage on the upgrade right now for us. It's like an extra 20 every time we play it. I want natural 20, so I have a reliable source of vulnerability to our enemies. There's nothing in the Disheveled Salesman by this point that I can afford. Like, if I went to that shrine and then tried to come down, I would already be blocked off of this point because I would have chosen the shrine over uh, the merchant. So it's not like I could ever have gotten to that Disheveled Salesman without a secret room with enough value in order to actually be able to purchase something. That is our second block. I've literally been talking about the fact that we do not have enough access to block here, and the game has given me two times now a block void stone in order to try and mitigate that. We're starting to get into the realm where really I do just have to do that. I could easily put it in surefoot, and I wouldn't feel too bad about that. Like, nine block, 25% rage, rebound, so I have the ability to purge it the second time it comes back to hand, or play it for two energy for 18 block, one card, and 50% rage. Hey, if there was one card that was two energy and said block 18, 50% rage, I would have drafted that, right? So why do I not do this? I do this, is the answer. 
Why do I not do this? Well, we do. Uh, Hidden Blade is just really bad at holding, holding stones because of the inert. Black Void Stones both want to go into Sleight of Hand, Juggle, and Quickness. Because we have so little combo access. And because we're not going for that many artifacts this floor either, our combo access is not going to get easier. Like, maybe until the next floor. So it feels like those still need to be free. I can't put a uh, yellow... Void Stone just suddenly in one of those. I think I can literally just throw this into parry and then upgrade the parry and be pretty happy about that as well, though. So, fine. Here's our natural 20. Almost certainly going to hit its own upgrade. Ghostly Piranhas. Is there anything I need to manage about this deck for the sake of the Ghostly Piranhas? Yeah, Scattershot really shouldn't be in there. I'll replace it with Sift. I don't want to introduce a bunch of debuffs to enemies. I don't want to debuff the enemies. I mean, that one's pretty easy. Keep the good block for the next turn. And this is one where I do want two down at the exact same time. Two down at exactly the same time. And then we just want to get to second chance, right? As quickly as possible, so I drop defense there. Good. Whew. Very, very pleased with how that went down. Second quickness still feels like the upgrade right now, given the energy crunch we're in. The energy crunch is only going to get worse as I go to the next two spaces, get the All Alone and the Apprentice of Blade. Hey, that All Alone wouldn't have actually been a bad location to put the Yellow Void Stone in. Makes it a really, really good defensive card whenever I'm up against just a single enemy. That said, I need a good defensive card in all situations. A good defensive card for all seasons rather than that right now, so maybe that really shouldn't have been the way he... Hey, 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 hang on, hang on. Jab? Kind of important to me. Do-over? Not important to me. Cursed item? Um, I can't check the modifiers I have on at the moment, which would be a, a, a useful quality of life thing here. Um, I'll bring over impossible. No, okay, I can't check it there either. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I took the one where destroying void items isn't really going to help me. So I could actually repath here and go but 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 right I miss out on the class trainer but I get a merchant and I get a shrine so I get the ability to pray at the shrine for the sake of the the gold right because that was the thing that I left on take it or leave it frail constitution lingering Andrews yeah that sounds like I left that on um so then I can pray for that and then go to a merchant try and find some access god I hope I find bide specifically bide game please Ghostly Piranha, where we literally did just make the deck modification for the sake of the Ghostly Piranha, and we're not going to want to add natural 20. So, let's go into the fight. I could kill one this turn, but I don't want to. I'll keep that parry at least, though. Okay, that mid-target is the target for the, the second chance when I have a kill set up on a different target as well. Really? Okay. Ah, never mind. There weren't that many attacks left in my deck. That was uh, entirely on me, as it turns out. That one? My bad. As much as I want to try and perfect this fight, I think perfecting this fight actually kills us. Uh, 
don't need quickness. Second chance draws two on the sleigh. Fine. 116 across there, a 24, purge a slight, and end the fight. Whew, that could have been a lot worse. So we're definitely going to manage the deck here to take out the unload and put in the Apprentice's Blade. That Apprentice's Blade is not a bad idea to have a Red Voidstone in. So Red Voidstone is saved for Stiletto for the ability to ramp up our Rage on a turn that we intend to use a lot of Mithril Blades. What else is it good for? Well, it's pretty good for Stiletto. I'm going to put it in Apprentice's Blade. The Unholy Beast gets stronger every turn. This is about the fastest our deck can get without cutting all defense. Sanguine Stopwatch. Each time you play an attack, increase the counter on this by one. Where the counter reaches 12, trigger bleed on all creatures. We're not really a bleed deck. Carrying case. If you kept a non-weakness card in your hand at the end of your turn, you'll draw one more card at the start of your next turn. I think I'm underutilizing that. I think I think... I, I think... I think part of me ignores the ridiculous value that proposes. I would have the ability to hold anything that's a rebound play still in hand. So this is effectively just another 20 damage per turn at that rate. And then it suddenly becomes a good gem holder, right? If I'm actually planning on holding a rebound card, either that or Surefoot. Then there's also the Band of Power. Every seventh attack card played will trigger an additional time. Now that's important for only one reason, because these Hidden Blades, they, they trigger as many times as I have combo, right? So one more trigger is actually kind of relatively small on them. So what that does is it allows me to hybridize between a swift attack build and a heavy attack build. So it allows me to keep things like second chance in the deck. And then I use things like the hidden blades to, to amp the impact of an eventual double triggered second chance attack. That's really what the blade of power does for us. There's one card in the deck that I currently want to do that with. one card in the discard I may eventually want to do that with. You know what? Let's play around the carrying case. I think it's time. I think it's beyond time, frankly. Let's start with the slash, though. Ah, oh, my bad. Yeah, I can't draw any more cards this turn, and then I tried to draw. It's, uh, that, that's not how that one works, Raps. It's exactly the thing you're not allowed to do. Should probably hold on to that sure foot for the next turn. Purge the slash. This enemy does daze us quite uh quite repetitively. Slash into sure foot into parry. Can I purge that hidden blade? It's got a rebound, so I can play it first. I'll cop four, and then another 22 this turn. Purge quickness and sleight of hand. Triple defend here. I forgot to put the vulnerability back in my deck. Sleight of hand's going to be too slow. Use the power this turn. We have no vulnerability set up. We're not going to have vulnerability set up. We have no rage set up. We might have rage set up, but I want the extra turn worth a cooldown. Sure. <clears throat> there are... Uh, admittedly, maybe one dead draw in the deck that... Okay, never mind. That doesn't get the kill this time. Okay, let's uh 
All alone is something that I will sub in or out, really dependent on the the fight that I happen to be going to at the time. Um, I really don't want to cut a parry, but none of this looks like what I want to keep at this point either. I got a slash. Oh, why do I feel bad about that? The, uh, Jinx Leprechaun as well as the Red Caps. <sighs> Dueling Buckler is important, but... Uh, I feel very threatened by this fight, and I worry that that's my... That's, that's my intuition trying to tell me something that my brain isn't hearing. Threatened in this fight? Shut up, intuition. <laughs> you, you, you nerd. Yeah, 38 on that. You know what? I'll even go for this. Alright. 38, we get our draw two. That's now draw two by base as well? I thought it was draw one. No, it, it was always draw two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Maybe. I'm I'm not familiar enough to, to recognize the patches as they occur at the moment as it turns out. Thought it was though. Whoops. Okay, not only was that fight nothing, we were never really threatened. Got a black void stone currently on the burner. Uh, I'm gonna hold. I can kill next turn. I don't need to don't need to worry. Just a turn on that cooldown. I can't only have a single large block. I'm taking main gauche and then I'm immediately going to upgrade it, getting it to 10. That was juggle. How did I... Juggle. Main gauche. Well. My bad there. I mean, like, yes, I actually do want that in juggle. And I could even happily give juggle a, a draw discard, right, as well. Have it draw discard four. Um, giving us a lot of damage out of the sleight of hand. Like, it deals 20 damage with the sleight of hand after we do that. No secret room adjacency, unfortunately. There is a way I could actually go to that Soul Collector. It ignores Bladestorm, but it gets Mithril Blades. It goes like that. It also looks for... Oh, but it misses out on the Shrine as well. <sighs> Am I really willing to roll the dice that the Soul Collector is going to have a thing that I can purchase for probably 20 souls? There are so many things it could be selling, though, that would be absolutely monumentally transformative to the run. I'm taking the risk. No secret room. Okay. Dragon Welbling is all alone, so we will put our all alone into the deck. Um, I'm going to cut a parry. I'm also going to put a dueling buckler in there and cut a parry for that too. It's a very early sleight of hand. I can actually use that. <laughs> hey, and it does trigger on itself. I was wondering if that was going to be the case. Um... Yeah. Suffer that damage. Okay, so hang on. The first time you travel, blah, 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 at the start of each fight, the first enemy you target with an attack card. So it does happen after, I knew that, but it doesn't happen in between individual triggers of the same attack card. You can see applied debuff to Dragon Whelpling at the very bottom there. So what I should have done... Actually, I'm going to take the opportunity to do it here. 
Uh, All Alone went into the deck, and so did Dueling Buckler. And then we cut two parries in order to do that. Nothing else changed. Then we go into that fight. Because I want to demonstrate it. Please give me the same hand. Thank you. Uh, Slight. Then it's Quickness. Then it's Hidden Blade to reveal the vulnerability. We parry, and then we use the All Alone. We're holding on to the Hidden Blade. Like, I, I wanted to hold on to the Rebounding Hidden Blade the entire time, just to utilize the Carrying Case. So we get up to six draw. Or rather, six max hand draw. Next turn. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use the Ghost Blade, allowing me to use Dueling Buckler for all of our defense this turn. Urge a parry and a slash. That juggle looks really good too. Uh, we're already on full combo, so I can get rid of quickness definitely and slash definitely. I kind of want to get rid of the apprentice blade, but I kind of don't want to get rid of. No, I, I'm going all out this turn. There we go. And that's why we go all out that turn. As much as I want to give the all alone that plus trigger right now. Main gauche, sleight of hand, natural 20, main gauche first. We've been having enough defensive problems, main gauche first. Come on, please. Those are really good costs. Are they really good things though? At the start of your turn, gain two volatile hidden blades. Yes, that's incredible. Thieves tools, at the start of each fight, one temporary celerity will be added to your deck. Celerity says gain combo equal to your max. So just fill up on your combo. I'd be interested to play with that tool, but uh, trusty fish hook, and that's exactly what we need in this situation. Thank you very much. I'm going to walk away. Okay. Juggle sure looks incredible right now, don't it? Right? If that's how we run our deck. In fact, if that's how we run our deck, we could take thinning out and juggle, and then the idea literally just becomes uh, play out two copies of Sleight of Hand after it gets upgraded, right? We'll get the Black Void Zone in Sleight of Hand. We'll upgrade it. It'll deal 10 damage for a random enemy each time we dispel or expel a card. Uh, mm, no, because it's card negativity of one each time. So while I'm doing, what, 40 damage a piece? No, wait, hang on. It's, it's 5, 10. Yeah, so it's 40 and then the... So what... While it does deal damage, it doesn't scale well. Is that bad? Do I have to worry about scaling right now? That redo with an upgrade would also be really good. Leading edge. It's not swift. Deal twenty. Uh, deals 13 damage. And then if it's the opener, gains two volatile hidden blades. That's actually really good as well. I came here looking for combo and I'm walking away with not that. Am I okay with walking away with not that? Not right now, I'm not, no. That puncture would really, like, that, that puncture solves all of our problems right now, actually. Because it gives us the ability to be a instantaneously volatile hidden blade deck whilst still having access to as much ramping as we are going to need for bosses at the end of the game. Like, I'm I'm jazzed about that, but unfortunately can't get it. Redo upgraded, also not bad, right? It's just energy positivity for us. It's also an expel card. Because I haven't done it before, the whole sleight of hand build, I'm going to lean in. We're taking that juggle. I'm not going to take thinning out here, though. Recharge is really good. Okay, this is a single target again. Uh, we do have a draw potion. We have no access to slow. We have a little access to weak, which is already in the deck. Let me throw a blaze as well. Good lord. We're starting to get to the point that I no longer need slashes in this deck. But we're not entirely there yet. We are getting close, though. Now that we have two copies of this juggle, we can definitely put a blue void sign in one. Okay. Let's go in. Hmm. These are all pretty important. 
Flame Shield probably leads the Witch right now. Least of which or most of which? It could be most of which. Every six ability cards played. Sometimes we play like two abilities before we play a bunch of... Eh, two or three abilities before we play a bunch of uh, swift attacks. Two percent rage would be nice. Every sixth attack card played is instead returned to your hand instead of your discard. Uh, even volatile cards will be returned to my hand. I wonder if they'll still count as destroyed, but then also return to my hand. For the sake of something like sleight of hand. I'm going to take Black Clockwork here. Especially due to the two Hidden Blades that we have every single turn. I feel like it's a pretty good idea. Let's use Oversized first. Okay. I should hold on to good defending cards here, if possible. Purge Slash. Slash. Play Mithril. Play Apprentices and just Hidden, 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 Hidden. The enemy is removing all of their debuffs this turn and gaining AP plus one, which means they're purging all of their debuffs, including the vulnerability we put on them from Sneak Artist. So we really want to wait a turn before we do that. All alone is good damage after that as well, though. You know, the really frustrating thing here is I think we actually just hold this whole hand. Let's go sleight of hand, quickness. What? Hang on. How did... Uh, did anyone see where my energy just went? Gained energy, gained energy. I, I was on five energy at the start of this turn. I played sleight of hand. It spent all of the rest of my energy. There's no effect on me that would cause that to happen. Quickness? I could only play Quickness because it was free. I've actually had this happen once off camera and I couldn't identify what had happened. But... This is... Well, this is a problem. Um... I'm gonna try and resolve the rest of the fight. It's gonna be a lot harder without the extra energy that we had access to on that turn, because now I have to give up a lot more resources to accomplish the same things. Um, let's juggle. As much as I want underhanded, it's really hard to use. And eight. Okay, we're fine. Drop that. And one of the blades as well. Natural 20 doesn't need to be there either. Use quickness. And then it's dueling buckler as well as purge the juggle. Play parry and main gauche. And then give him the damage points. Size backpack. We do manage to draw a damage card. And sure, I'll surefoot as well. All right, we managed to get our perfect victory there, but... Um, what? Cripple applies to weak. Boiling blood. Suffer burning fire. Nah, it's, the, the ghost blade is, is everything I want. Like, I would upgrade from either of those to ghost blade. It was a card that I just got that I did want. It wasn't there. Recharge. Eh, I don't actually desperately need recharge here. All alone probably should have been taken out in favor of recharge, though. Okay. Use oversized first. We get to a slash that we don't really want to use anymore. Having used the backpack, we also don't want to use that juggle anymore this turn, but we do want to use it next turn. It's pretty important again. Um, let's purge slash. Use quickness. Purge all alone. Play Sleight of Hand and then Apprentice's Blade. Use Ghost Blade as well. So it's actually important I kill some of these wards 
Increases the mistress's AP by two. Eh. Inflicts burning five. That's probably uh, kill worthy. Now, maybe I could have targeted the Swamp Mistress and, and killed a lot faster. Maybe. Eh, who knows? <laughs> um, let's get rid of this. This, this. Sure foot. I don't think that's necessary. Play the Dueling Buckler and then another juggle. I'm happy to drop Main Gauche, Quickness, and Harry here. Then I think we need Mithril Blades out. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the jumps again, actually. And then hold the uh, the hidden blade at the end in hand. Actually, utilize the carrying case. I know that I've been on and off so far with my play of utilizing the carrying case. I apologize about that. I'm gonna try and be a bit more specific about it. Well, all of our defense comes from Shorefoot already. Three. Four. That returns it to hand again. And then kill him with a second chance. Got a perfect fight there as well as two upgrade points. Uh, the upgrade points are desperately needed by this deck. So sleight of hand, we literally just got the black void stone I was talking about. So sleight of hand wants an upgrade. Uh, mithril blades, I mean, like we are a deck that generates a ridiculous amount of hidden blades. So it's a, a, a pretty obvious damage amp right there for us. Uh, let's go for, let's go for um, maybe popping the black void stone into the slate of hands. Use that at the start of each battle. Um, if we could get the car key so we can actually get that in each opening hand, that'd be really nice. Discovery. Discovery to probe for it would also actually be really good. Let's look at the map rewards. Discard hand, gain that many volatile hidden blades plus one is exactly the combination we want with, uh, with this. Purging a card in order to block is also a really good combination for this. Focus is interesting. I don't know if I desperately need it. I'll tag it and Discovery, though. And then the rest of these are actually just, like, not at all for us. This is an ability with a Swift keyword. However, you only multicast Swift attacks, not Swift abilities. So, uh, I know that there were a few people pointing that out previous time. I just wanted to make that on camera. Kind of aware. Um... Focus, fresh, fresh steel's there. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just read the map to you right now. This is how it feels to me. Bop, 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 bop. Uh, can't go down into that ditch there. Bop, 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 bop. Right. That's what the map looks like to me right now. Now, I could see a really, really effective argument being made that if we go to that Dark Mime and dupe the sleight of hand that we now have in the deck, uh, we will win. Every single card that is destroyed is 20 damage to a random enemy. Uh, or rather, 5 damage 4 times to a random enemy, more important. Has the ability to split its value. But also, every time we discard a card does that. Uh... And whenever we end up playing Fresh Steel, we just kind of kill everyone. Hey, we actually can't get that focus on this path. Uh, so what alternatives are there? There's no alternative that gives us both this Elite as well as the Dark Mind. That's not happening. Fresh Steel is definite. I'm actually going to use red here to mark the things that I 100% have to go to. Right? Those are non-negotiable. 
The fact that I have to go to both this Soul Collector and this Ice Wall down here means that I have to enter from the top in order to be able to do that. I also get the Sanguine Shell, two upgrades. I mean, look, I'm not going to complain about those. Um, but that means I also have to go from this position. So this, this is a guaranteed position for us. If I want to take this Elite... Now, this is actually... A, this is questionable, right? I could avoid this Elite, right? Giving me the ability to go Fresh Steel and then Shrine, Stonesmith, and Dark Mime. Let's make that a blue path because it's an alternate... Wait, I can't make that a blue path. Okay, well, uh, let's, let's go for... Greens on these, and then reds for those. Right? And then the point that we make the decision is going to be the blank space. So this always happens, right? This is always our opening. It gets us two more spaces for the sneak artist, which is not nothing, but it also has the possibility of finding a secret room. If it finds a secret room here... I'm still fine because I go to that secret room, then I go to this, then I cut across, across, up, and then go across this, right? So if either of these are a secret room, I have some way to utilize it. In fact, it can't be here, right? If I go here, I can't find a secret room there because then I'd have to go up and then how do I ever leave? Oh, wow. I think I might have just learned something about the secret room's morning logic. Hey, all of these start in Discovery, so why not just move there? Is there anything I upgraded that I upgraded specifically to place into the deck? Not really. I'm going to take out All Alone and put Recharge in here because this is a group fight. Some good vulnerability right there. Oh, slash, go combo, combo, vulnerability to everyone. Do it once and do it right. I don't want the rutting gut friend to actually explode. I could prevent a decent amount of damage this turn by killing the flesh beast. But doing that allows a respawn. Oh, wow. Okay, so if Light Clockwork happens and happens alongside a rebound trying to occur, it'll actually just override the rebound. That's not great. It's not great for us right here. We're, uh... I mean, look, it's, it's something I've now learned and something I'm going to play around in the future. So in that way, great. This will blades once that upgrade to... Um, I'm gonna purge juggle. Use parry, recharge, pulling back main gauche, play main gauche. Use ghost blade. Just gonna start removing targets from the field. Yeah, that was a lot further away from being close than I thought it was. I have a, uh, ooh, how to describe it? Uh, my calculations for when I can turn and burn in this deck are currently false. They're wrong. They're, they're faulty. There's something about it that I'm missing. Is it that I'm almost uh, guaranteed to be able to access as much, uh, as much, uh, combo as I want, as quickly as I want? Or am I actually not able to do that? And I'm being very lucky right now. So I've got three combo sources in my deck, three individual sources of combo, right? I'm ignoring the slashes because they're likely to be really cut soon. So slew, uh, three individual sources of combo in the deck. I have ridiculous draw, right? Plus three each, uh, there's plus three, and then, you know, 
plus four. And I have the ability to resummon cards back into hand using recharge. Those slashes increasingly feel like they don't make much sense in this deck. Dang. Double whiff right there. It's Mithril. Even if we don't end up using it, it's Mithril there. Then we have to go to the Fresh Seal. No choice. Any modifications made to the deck for this fight? I mean, literally, we just did have this fight. It's just whether or not I would add in, I guess, another Mithril Blades. No. Okay, let's go. Thirty incoming damage next turn is a lot. I have no access to quickness yet. Uh, sorry, combo yet. How far off is my spell? I can't even see it at the moment. Uh, gosh. I'm going to drop that parry. I'm going to use recharge to get juggle back. Okay, there's some combo. Now, volatile cards, whenever they leave your hand, destroyed when played or at the end of the turn. So if I put this into the discard, it destroys at the end of the turn, right? So what I'm saying is, do I get to keep my draw like that? I do. In fact, it is destroyed on the discard. They're in the destroyed pile. There's the slights of hand that we need. Parry, hidden, hidden, hidden. Next hand has dueling buckler, main gauche, surefoot. So if I'm on full combo, I'm okay next turn anyway. Actually. I was really hoping for a better draw than that TBH. To be quite perfectly honest. There's another quickness in there at least. Slash next hand does nothing as well, though. I spent all turn doing nothing, just literally getting to the cards that are going to allow me to do something. I don't like it. Because I don't have a card that allows me to say, okay, well... All that happened, but it's okay. We're fine. Uh, just, just, just missing that, that piece of tech right there. The we're okay piece of tech. Really gonna need a fractal feather or something to help uh, support us on turns like that, or a stiletto with a block in. Gonna be hard to get the block, but. Find a way. As much as I want to use the oversized backpack, two of the cards in the deck are juggle right now, and I really don't want to draw into those. There's one juggle. Okay. 24. 24. How's this doing 24 and this is doing 24? Right? 24. Deals four. Wait. Wait. Wait, does the upgrade to the hidden blade not upgrade its damage? Oh, yeah, it adds inert right now. Okay, yeah, 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 this is all fine. Hop. Hop, hop one more time and then a hop over there.
I'm having difficulty seeing the impact of the, the sleight of hand here. 24. Discarded or expelled. Right, not destroyed. Expelled. Discard or expel. Okay. This is my fault. <laughs> discard that card. They. Okay, and it doesn't count if you discard a volatile card, which then destroys. Got it. This whole slide of play, uh, slide, 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 slide play is, uh, slightly worse. Oh no, I didn't want to do that. Dueling buckler upgrade. Gonna hit that defense. Well, I no longer really care about duping the the slight hand as much as I had previously. I mean, it's still not bad after we get them out. But, like, only with the juggles. I might be able to, like, cycle juggle into juggle into juggle for a while. Okay. Going north. Praying for greed. Going to the stonesmith. That's a green void stone. I can use that for setup. I mean, look. There is so much here that I would want to set up. I could just set up mithril blades. And I think I will. Reroll for 50. Purple void stone. Extra energy does matter. Sure. Okay, the Mithril Blades is going to get the socket there for us. You're probably not going to get the next Void Stone after this green. So if I'm at the end of my Void Stones, I could actually see this going in all alone. in main gauche. I, I, I pull main gauche back a lot. Alright, Dark Mime. We only have 20 souls. We're about to hop along the top here to go to a soul collector as well. I actually think I don't do anything here. That was... I, I'm not happy with how I've played the last couple floors. Don't worry. If you're not... It just, just no, I'm on your side. We agree as to how I've handled the last couple of floors. But focusing on that is not going to help anyone. So just keep trying. Keep on keeping on, you know? Fire Might and the Pyre, they, they actually probably don't threaten me as much as I'm, I'm currently guessing they will. It's, no, take those out of the deck. There we go. Start out with a backpack. Perfect. We purge underhanded, play mithril. I'm not able to hold anything for the next turn, so if anything is planned value rather than instantaneous value, I kind of just need to get rid of it. Quickness, recharge, play that same quickness again. 
perch, and then target to target, you know? Start out with a juggle. Dueling buckler main gauche. Okay, we were already okay then. So the dueling buckler is going to be five and then it repeats another. So it's going to be 20 by itself, which means that surefoot dueling buckler is already more than enough for us, which actually means main gauche dueling buckler is more than enough for us. And that's going to be the two that I choose to play. And um, it's kind of planning a second chance kill there. I don't know exactly what happened there. Oopsie doopsie. Yeah, it's 30 incoming and there's a lot of damage. I could sleight of hand, sleight of hand, juggle. Let's do it. I'm gonna sleight of hand, sleight of hand, juggle. I'm gonna drop the hidden blades here. That's another juggle. Huh. Um, drop another hidden blade and then use fresh steel to discard a bunch of cards and then use these hidden blades to actually collect the kill. Yay! We did it in one fight. We actually did the thing we were gonna do. Uh, natural 20 for the extra tons of vulnerability. The extra volatile blade there doesn't matter too much though. Uh, but I mean, they are kind of, kind of the most important things here. Uh, the sure foot. The extra energy back after I play it. Yeah. Sure. Foot. Uh, then... Secret room! Thank you! Blades upon blades. Deal eight damage. It's a swift attack as well. Um, and gain a volatile hidden blade. So I would need to find a way to get my combo back after that. Getting our combo back is actually a bit difficult for us. Swift Hand. All Swift Attack cards. Trigger plus one on that turn, but I'd have to hold it for exactly the right turn. And even then, like, it's half as good as a Mithril. It's way, way worse, in fact, than a Mithril Blades. I'm going to take Blades upon Blades. I'm pretty compelled to try and make it useful. Quite deeply compelled, in fact. Discovery to find the right card at the right time, I also think I probably should upgrade and put into the deck. Actually, you know what? Do I ever upgrade that? Or do I leave those both expelling? Right? Because then the second cycle through the deck, I'm I'm kind of hopefully, by that point, out of powers and relatively well established. You know what we're missing by that point is block. I hate the idea of just upgrading a parry right now, though. My distaste for just upgrading a straight parry right now might actually cause me to lose the game. I'm acknowledging that right now. I don't like it, but I, 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 I am worried. That red void stone isn't bad in terms of putting it in a... Uh, oh, wait, I haven't even put the card in my deck yet. The Blades Upon Blades. It's decent damage out there that way. The only problem is getting our combo back afterwards is really hard to do. Trusty Snack. Overcharge grants two energy. Overcharge is a little hard for us to get each time you draw a Bane. Draw one. Eh. Um, this, is a, this is a really, really unexciting Soul Merchant, unfortunately, for us. The enemy has Bleed at the start of your turn. Draw one card. As much as I like the idea of that, I have nothing currently that gives bleed i would have to alter my deck negatively in order to include the value of this so i'm gonna go random serpent skull whenever a ble Yikes. bleeding enemy dies it transfers its bleed to another enemy yeah this was all really 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 deeply not good the second half of this floor i, I got worries folks god do i ever have worries 
can get the Mithril already out there. Then hold on to some decent defense for the next turn. Let me get this out as early as possible as well. Definitely double quickness. I'll sure foot. Sure foot. Let's parry as well. This midline is dying right now. I can discover and play something for one. Natural 20. Discover natural 20. Parry, purge, and then play this. Damn close to a kill. So damn close that we're able to collect one at the start of this turn. I'm going to have to draw if I actually want to be able to defend myself here. Okay. Buckler and main Gosha are already all of the defense we need. Don't really need more rage. That translates to more damage. Might use fresh steel yet. Thirty six. Definitely good enough. Two, three. Rebound, so not the rebound one, though. Got to remember that. There we go. And I'll happily hold on to this one. Kill next turn. Got him. There's our upgrade point as well. Natural 20 finally needs that upgrade. Put all alone in the deck, definitely against Dolus. So I'm going to cut the fresh. I'm also going to put another Mithril Blades in the deck against Dolus. Cutting Hidden Blade, I guess. Because uh, any of our Hidden Blades could just randomly cost, well, three. Block three for each combo consumed. I will occasionally actually consume my combo with that Blades Upon Blades. But that's not really ideally a defensive turn. It's the best one there, though. There we go. Mithril Blade. Drop an Apprentice's Blade. I am going to need my combo pretty high regardless. Yeah, like, look at all those... Look at all those unplayables there. Two more. Get him. I'm going to dueling buckler here and then... Double purge so I can blades upon blades, which does come back to hand. It also consumes a... Yeah, it also consumes a decent amount there. Hmm. Please give me playable ones. These are non-playable. It's fine though. It does look like we already got to kill. Ooh, that's a good mithril blades right there. Finish off the enemy. We get the ice wall. Ice wall ideally does go into the deck and gets upgraded. Uh, does it? 
And it goes into the deck right now. All alone is not as relevant in this combat. Take that out. Pop the Hidden Blade back in. Fresh Steel is a little more relevant in this combat too, so... I think it's time to get second chance out of the deck with the... Parry in the... Okay, Red Void Stone. Look, I... I if, if that's ever going to be utilized in any effective way, it's in the Blade Upon Blades. So, I'm sure it goes in Blade Upon Blades. Do we want to put anything else in the opening hand with the Green Void Stone? I mean, I could see a world where I put another Mithril Blades in the opening hand here. I could even see a world where I put the Green Void Stone into the Sleight of Hand. Overriding the Black Void Stone that's already in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. One, two purges, two combo. We start going off on someone. I mean, look, they're all the same at this rate. We do need two of them to go down at the same time though. That is a necessity. Okay, I'm going to purge the ice wall. I'll use recharge to pull the ice wall back into hand, which I will immediately purge once more. This might be my worst decision. I'm playing both sleights of hand. Vulnerability, honestly, probably not going to be set up next turn. We're going to be looking for defense. Fine. Main Gauche and Dueling Buckler both left in the deck. We can juggle for them. I think we have to. Be Surefoot first. No. Uh, Let's get rid of the additional parry, right? This is 20... Main Gosh. Actually, take the damage then this turn. Right? We might have. Yeah, we did. Whew. About to say, might have just found lethal on that turn. Might have generated enough value. <sighs> Missile Blades, Fresh Steel, Ice Wall. All of them want an upgrade. Defense is our problem. Ice Wall. We already stated that before, right? We we shouldn't have needed to restate it there. That's my bad. Um, still don't think we're going to put this in anything yet. Especially up against this Guardian. Because random targeted things could still target an immune Guardian here. So, got to make sure that I don't allow that to occur. Let's just start the battle. This is a great opening turn. Purge, purge, mithril, mithril, quickness. We're in a really good position now. Literally, if we just generate like enough hidden blades, we'll win this fight. It's a very good position to be in. Okay, let's go. Surefoot, surefoot. Uh, as much as I do want natural 20, I probably want it in the next cycle. How far away is the next cycle? Maybe the next cycle is really quick. Getting close up on my tail here. Yep. Yeah, it was. It's okay, we have more combo building in the deck. Uh, let's quickness. Build even more combo. Main 
Gosh. I don't really want to main Gosh right now. Yep. If nothing else, for the overcharge. I'm so not in threat this turn that it's really hard to hold two defensive cards. So I won't. Especially because I'm at the bottom of the cycle, so I'm getting back to those two defensive cards relatively soon as well. Okay, we'll start with the juggle. I'm not going to be using sleight of hand at all here. One more Yugle. This looks good to me. Okay. One more target down, and then we just got the black coach that we have to worry about. No incoming damage next turn as well makes life a lot easier. Keep the rebounding hidden blade in hand as well. And it's already charged to rebound again. Or rather, something's charged to rebound. As I kill one black coach. Hmm. I'm really, really upgrade point hungry still at this point, aren't I? Mithril, fresh steel. We found how the deck runs, and it sits with those. First card each turn costs two less. Saves all of our energy problems ever. Blessing Rejuvenation, we'd be able to heal super easily. That spider nest also shouldn't be too difficult for us to overwhelm. Void spawns with one less fury. Frenzy, rather, sorry. Uh, we will probably end up going the Obsidian Golem here as well as the Spider Nest. Having a look at our preparation for the sake of the Spider Nest. Honestly, I don't think there is anything that we change here. Oh, spiders. Come out to play, etc., etc., you know. Look, if sleight of hand is in the opening hand, maybe though. No, we still have to be a lot faster than that. And also, the other one lines up so well. Uh, okay, so each of these enemies, they lose one frenzy each time they are a target of an attack card to a minimum of one. Uh, they're also all attacking on turn one, and I'm taking 65 damage, so I don't really know how I was supposed to, outside of killing them, really prevent that super effectively. So one down, and one heavily, heavily limited in terms of what they can do. Natural 20 looks like a uh, natural play. Yeah. Let's purge blades upon blades and mithril going sure foot, sure foot, natural 20. And then honestly, I actually think we probably have full leap. We do. Nice. That's exactly the reason I did it like that. All right, obsidian golem. Uh, if we handle the obsidian golem in the exact same way, we'll be totally fine. In fact, in the Obsidian Golem, I may now have the ability to put the second Mithril Blades into a socket. God, it's going to be really hard to get rid of that Dueling Buckler right now. But I got to do it. If I want that upgrade to mean anything, it has to happen. Discovery, so I can dig looking for more defense. Let's juggle first. Do that. Uh, and blades upon blades. And probably the next juggle as well. And the oversized backpack. Okay. So recharge finds dueling buckler. We use a quickness. We'll purge the natural twin. Oh, we're not going to even be able to 
play it, are we? We're going to discovery the ice wall and then purge that. Yeah, that was short of where I wanted to be. Should have discovered the ice wall, purged that, then uh, brought that back, then purged that again. Would have given us a lot more energy to use for the rest of the turn. Okay, main gauche and surefoot. Easy. Purge the surefoot for an apprentice's blade, and then... Start removing targets. That'll do it. All right, Obsidian Golem, it's down to just you and I. Gonna try and make sure that I leave the Ghost Blade for the early combo at the start of the next fight. Naturally, we will juggle. Probably gonna use the Apprentice's Blade as a setup at the end here. Yeah. Purge. None of those attempts, actually. It's fine. I can play the Apprentice's Blade, then purge one of the temporaries it gives us. All's well that ends well, and it looks like this will end well. Get him, main gauche. Beautiful. All right, now we release souls. We will go and pop draw, double health, and a strength potion into the deck. Uh, there is a world in which I try and put that all alone back in here somehow. It's way less impactful than a single Hidden Blades. It's, it, does, it doesn't go in the deck. All right, Void. It's really hard to convince me any of those spells are going to be better than the uh, combo generator we still need. Probably going to hold that ice wall until next turn as well. Mithril into... Quickness, Perch, Hidden Blade, Mithril. Really want to play that juggle. No, I need to save energy for future turns. So that's something I'm not doing yet. Something I really should be doing as well. Unfortunately, our damage doesn't scale very well. Or rather, it scales really, really, really well up until a point, and then it stops scaling well. Okay. Get rid of the ice wall. What would I discover? Probably Apprentice's Blade. I'm gonna discover sleight of hand and play that two times soon. This will actually be part of our damage engine. Surefoot's pretty good for the next turn. It's also a really good card to hold on to here. Getting the extra draw. So, Apprentice's Blade, easy first cast. We'll Surefoot. We'll play Surefoot again. We're up to 100 Rage now. Let's purge a parry and Oversize here. Interesting. Got two Quicknesses as well. All right, I like it. We'll purge Recharge and Juggle, and then I'm going to Blade, 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 Blade. Blade, blade. Nice blades. And then a blade upon blades. Play two quicknesses thereafter. Uh, blade, 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 blade. Some more blades. Uh, blade. And blade again. Maybe a couple times more as well. Down to 52 HP on the enemy remaining. We're going to kill next turn. And that'll do it. Get him, hidden blade. Our maximum instability has increased by four. I've also unlocked the achievement, I'm okay. 
trust me. We also get to master the final card for the hidden, for the throat, one of the base cards in the bleed deck, giving us the uh, achievement, the hidden's mastery as well. Whew. Hey, I actually haven't even got the achievement complete the introduction mode. The training wheels are off. So uh, I got to dive back into that to uh, redo some of the achievements here. But we are now in the position where we can start utilizing the challenge coins uh, in order to modify our runs. Now, I've walked through these a little bit before. I'll be walking through them at the start of the challenges that we start doing with them. Um, I don't know if I'm immediately going to leap into doing that right now. Or maybe if I, I play normal impossible for the other two characters a little bit longer because the other two characters, I feel like I have less of a handle on how to defend myself when I'm not offered certain specific cards. I feel like I have um, a, a lot of over-reliance on certain cards in the other two classes. Now I have an over-reliance on some of the cards in this class as well, but there's more of them that I have an over-reliance on to the point that I can kind of just rely broadly, you know? Um, it, it's the other two I still feel like I've got some work to do on, but for the moment, my name is Ron Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Vault of the Void. Again, if you do want to do the thing where you get the thing, it is super cool. You go here and you type, welcome to the Republic. In there, you're here to proceed and get the new deck back. The Republic. I'd implore you to do so, and thank you again, Josh. For having added that into the game, I am uh, endlessly and deeply flattered. For the moment, my name is Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Vault of the Void. Hopefully, you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully, we'll see you next time.